Welcome back to this week's Real Country File. We've got part two of Stephen in Lancashire at Grays Gill Organic Dairy Farm and a new contender for the for what is your favourite tractor. Also, Anza's looking at some straw choppers. Anyway, I'm in a field of OSR. I don't know if you can see little yellow flowers. Uh, there's kind of few insects on them though, to be honest. But it started to bolt, so if you look here, that's grown probably a foot since last time we were in this field. It's really coming alive. It's 14 degrees today. I'm actually sweating as well because we're laying concrete as well at the same time. But things are really starting to motor on now. Spring is looking like it's here. So are we going to get another frost? We had some real cold weather at the beginning of the week and at the end of last week. But, you know, another two weeks we're into April. Um, I presume everyone's grass will be starting to grow. What do you think anyway? Is, is that the last of the cold weather or is there still going to be more to come? It's going to knock these flowers out, frost them off and then I'm going to have no yield out my OSR. Let me know what you think anyway. So let's go and see how Stephen's been getting on. In terms of you farming organically then, massive prices last year with fertiliser, you know, hikes in prices. Are you are you at a massive advantage now then because that doesn't affect you? Composted bedding muck. Slow release nitrogen, good for the soil. So anyway, yes, you're not going to get massive, massive yields out of it, but we seem to do all right. You know, but that's probably because we've got a really good topsoil because yeah. of the organic matter going back in. Yeah. It's slowly fed. We've got biological it's not slurry that's going to get washed off and down the river. No, it is slow release. Biological heritage meadows that you know have got 80 species of plant and grass in them. Well, that's you know, and your dad's always said, you got you got a plant take ragwort yeah. the cinnabar moth yeah yeah it thrives on it you take away ragwort you lose the moth you don't just lose the moth you use the raptor of the moth and the raptor of the raptor so you start to take away a food chain i'm sorry what he's going to take away in a minute um so you eradicate a food chain just by taking the plant away and if you if you're intensively cutting grass four or five times a year you're not going to get those lays and there's massive pushes to get nitrogen fixing plants back into lays and they were and there. You've got, you've got they it. were there. You've, you've there got anyway. We're very lucky because of Emma's dad didn't change. Yeah. So, you know, he stood there, took all the flack at, at, at auction, saying, you know, "You've got to change. Get with the times. Silage grass is the way forward." And, well, I like my nature. I like my birds. I'm sick silage. Of don't get me wrong. It's a lot easier if yeah. you can see a rain cloud coming. Yeah. You can just get, get the in. grass in. It's far easier. But time with hay, and because we sell the raw milk, the sweetness of the hay, you can taste it in the milk. It's full circle. Or you unwrap a bell of hay and you get that first outer layer off and bang, that punch of summer hits you and it's Amazing. just, yeah. Well, I, I, I love coming here, I've got to admit. There's, there's a general warm uh, to, you know, you have a, a wonderful farm shop. How's that going? How's the farm shop going? Good. Fabulous. Good. Yeah. Um, online has gone wild. It's absolutely <laughs> yeah. fantastic. With Obviously, just... Boris helped. Boris yes. says shop online, shop online so that yeah. was a huge All right, expansion. Okay, so that, at that point when the lockdown, that gave you a boost. Oh, we, we had butchers huge doing boost, 40 yeah. hours a week overtime. We, we were wow. saying, go home, we're going to burn you out. You, you need to go home. They're in a bubble, it's great. Um, but we thought post-COVID that we're going to see a drop-off. We haven't. It's right. continued cost, to grow. Cost of so. living, I'm not sure if people have stopped eating out and they're just cooking at home. Right. But we're still growing. We've had just had the biggest January we have ever had. And it's, the odd, it's the odd things that sell. Um, if it took top 10 online sellers every week, there'll be liver and heart every week in it. Oxford liver and heart? Yeah. Yeah. Right, every okay. Marabones is featuring in it. Yeah, so yeah. people understand food. So they're, they're buying, they're buying uh, nutrient dense cuts, but they're, they're also buying some of the cheaper cuts okay. and utilizing those in a, in a good way. We've got an awful, awful night coming up, haven't we, soon as well? Which is <laughs> oh, a restaurant, they're doing an awful night oh, right, with our okay. offals. Oh, well, what well, they're going to create would be interesting. Doesn't like liver. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'll <laughs> be good. And since I last come, I noticed another venture around the corner what, what's going on with that yeah, venture. Oh, good grief that's been a dream for forever and Folly it's or a venture no, it's yeah definitely a venture no it's um it's nearly there it's, it's, a, it's a, an eco eatery so it's a it's a green mm. oak framed glass walled octagon sat in the top of the hay meadow panorama of pendle uh, it's going to be char grill tandoor oven wood fired oven all cooked on wood so it's really going to sort of shape the menu uh yeah so it'll be yeah. Look, someone's happy there. Yeah, well, yeah, that, yeah. well, good luck with that new venture. Hopefully, you'll drop us a couple of videos to the real country farm yeah. throughout how that goes over the next Absolutely. few months. Maybe one of the youngsters on the farm might just have 10 minutes to help us out there. That'd be great to see yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, and, and I do know, Ian, that you're partial to the odd rant. 
<laughs> so feel free, feel free throughout the summer. If you're going to get it off your chest, get it off with us. Is do that all right? You, uh, do you know what you've just let yourself in for? <laughs> Give up, Foggy. Go away. Well, listen, thanks for inviting us down today. No problem. Absolutely Lovely to see you again. It's always good. You. Always good to Take you. care. Well, thank do. you. <laughs> thanks for that, Stephen. Now we'll go over to Angela and she's doing what she does best, which is watching somebody else work. Now, over the years, I've been to many agricultural machinery trades shows. And during that time, I've seen a lot of straw choppers available for sale but I've never actually seen one working so when I heard that Jack was doing some straw chopping on his farm today I thought I'd come along and take a look. You're a contractor yep. uh, here, so um, and I believe that you know most farmers wouldn't have their own straw chopper, no, would no, they? No. Just because of the sheer cost of them, really. Right. Uh, okay. We just come in as an hour, hourly basis. I see. Yes. So, Good. as a very rough estimate, what what sort of price is it for a straw chopper? Fifty to sixty grand, uh, probably going upwards now with the right. price increase. Okay. And for the uninitiated, and I know it's probably the the name for it speaks for itself, but. Yep. What does this machine actually do in terms of, like, why do you want one in the first place? So it, it's called a bale processor that chops your straw from that long to 5 mil to 50 mil, depending on what you're using it for. It'll even do wood chip um, for biomass boilers. OK, right. And so you need a smaller size of um, bits of straw to make yeah. it more palatable yeah. for the cows yeah, to eat. Yeah, so the, the cows don't sort it in the ration. Uh, I see, right. The, the, the intakes are up. You know, so it's a bit like sneaking bits of vegetables into yeah, a kid's lasagna. Yeah, is, yeah. If you chop it up yeah. small enough, they won't notice. Exactly. Right, yeah. okay, fine. And what kind of straw are you chopping today? Uh, barley straw. Right, okay, yeah. And so it puts it into the small pieces and then that goes into a diet feeder and yeah, mix mixes them with it all together else. in that yeah. case then. Right, okay, great. So just give me a tour of, of how this machine actually works. Okay, so these are the speed controls. Um, the straw goes into the tub that turns around the red tub on top and then it'll drop through into a, a series of hammers and through some screens to, depending on what size you actually want it to come out. So the, the size of the chop length required by the farmer for the diet is changed by these sieves that we put in so that the smaller the hole, the smaller the chop size. It's down to um, the, whether you're chopping wheat straw, barley straw, um, whatever your, your nutritionist requiring for your diet really. Here's a, a few different uh, sieves and all the different sizes to choose from. Is it, is it difficult to actually put the new ones on or is that a quick job? No, no, just a five minute job to swap them over. When, when the tub's flat, we tip the bale in the top and then uh, the rotors underneath will drag it through the hole and then it'll get processed through the hammers and out of the ele elevator at the back. Um, and then it'll come, it'll drop out the bottom onto a conveyor, onto another conveyor out the back into the pile that you, you've processed. size of the output yeah. so 
it's just uh, so much easier for them to uh, to eat compared with what it was to start with. Yeah. Take some chewing that one. Mm, that's it. It takes longer to digest, yeah. presumably, and, uh, and go through to be productive fuel for them. Right. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for uh, letting us watch you at work. And uh, yeah, hopefully these cows will find this very tasty. Thanks for that, Angela. Now, you might remember last week, we spoke to Rob in Blackdown, from Blackdown Farm Services in Devon, and he told us about his favorite tractor. Well, anyway, he's been out and about this week, and his friend, he thinks, has a contender. Here it is. Hello, everyone, I'm back. But this time, not to talk about my favorite tractor, I'm on farm to speak to somebody else about theirs. So we've stopped by with JP this morning while he's feeding up, just to have a chat with him about his favorite tractor. So, JP. What is your favourite tractor and why? Well, that's easy. Um, my favourite tractor is a John Deere 7810, the, ah, the Iron Lady. Yeah. Um, bags of power, actually quite manoeuvrable yeah. for, for, for what she is. Um, pulls like a train. Um, yeah, she just don't stop. She'll go on all day, every day. Um, absolutely brilliant. I mean, I've driven it for donkey's years. Yeah. What sort of <laughs> um, tasks do you do with it? Mainly, I'm on trailering, um, hauling silage with it during the summer. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll sort of do all sorts with her. Um, but tedding, raking, merging, anything you can think of to put on the back, she'll do it. Yeah, did um, I see you doing some rolling the other day? Did I see? Yeah, out with a Cambridge rollers. Yeah, out with a Cambridge rollers. Yeah, just, just all sorts. Um, yeah, she'll, she'll literally do anything. Um, and the sound of it, I don't know. Mm, if you've, uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't need a radio. Just open the side window. Yeah. Jobs are good. Yeah, I don't think you'd have many people disagreeing with that. No, that is definitely, <laughs> definitely right. Um, but if, you had, if you had to pick one, then would there be a disadvantage, a negative? <sighs> yeah, the, the, she's not. I wouldn't say she's not so comfy as like an R series or the, the modern tractors. Yeah. I mean, she's a few years old, bless her. Um, but yeah, I mean, the TLS. I mean, yeah, it's fine. It's fine for what it is, but there's no cap suspension. Yeah. Um, so when you're banging around like trailering around the around the lanes, especially, um, you sort of get out, get out in the evening. You can feel it like, but mm, um, sure. but no, I mean, there's everything else. There's there is no downside. No. <laughs> there's no, no. literally with a seven eight. There is no downside no, um, sure apart from the comfort. So the John Deere seven eight ten is JP's favourite tractor. But what's your favourite tractor? Send your videos to vids at therealcountryfold.co.uk to show us yours. Thanks for that, Rob. Now, what is your favourite tractor? Anyway, as I say, in this field of OSR, you can just see the odd flowers coming up. What will it look like next week? Tune in to find out. Thanks for watching this week, and we'll see you all then.